I am really, really close to getting the entire basement brewery done. The last thing that I have to do is install a RO system. So today I'm going to take you on my journey, getting it all installed and ready to go. I've already done the tee off of the main line. I'm coming out of the softener system after all the filters and everything that's coming from the well. And so I've got the outlet back here on the wall. So what I want to do is put a piece of plywood up here so that I can mount the pump and the RO system to it and everything. All right, so I got the plywood installed and then my idea is to put the RO system kind of like somewhere right here. And then I've also got the, there is a pump that I'm going to add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the RO system up on the wall. Uh, so I want to put the system here. All right, that looks pretty good. Did I mention that it's tight in here? <laughs> All right, so there's the filtration system in. I'm gonna go grab the pump and see how it's gonna fit in here, so I'll be right back. It looks like this pump will actually work really well, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of right there, because I'm gonna have the, the sump pump, or the sump down below here. All right, so we got the pump, we got the cord. So like I said, I think I'll have to probably add a outlet for it, which is not a huge ordeal. I got a, there's an outlet right up here. Can't see it on the camera, but there's one right up there. So I can add one from that. So here is the reservoir that I'm using and it's like a 30 gallon tank. It's a HDPE, so it's high density polyethylene, uh, food safe, you know, all that stuff. No problem with that at all. So I'm gonna put it right here, but the only issue that I've got is the sump pump is right down there. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me try to zoom in there and see. There's a sump pump right here. And as you can see, it's sitting on top of the edge of that. So what I've determined that I wanna do in order to, to fix that issue is I've actually got some concrete blocks that I wanna set the unit on. So I'll get those into place. All right, so I got the blocks in, and then one of the other things that I wanted to make sure I did was I actually got a hot water heater pan. Let me uh, pan down here and show you what I'm talking about. So right down there is a hot water heater pan. So I wanted to make sure that if for some reason the float stuck or something happened with the, the reservoir here, that it would drain not into my basement and ruin all the work that I've spent time and money on, but actually drain into the sump pump. All right, I know it's kind of hard to see because of all the pipes and everything in the way, but there is a white hose, hard plastic like PVC hose that comes with the system. And so I'm gonna hook it up to the hose bib or the, the garden hose connection here, Get it nice and tight. And then it comes around over to, let me see if you can see in the video or not there. It comes around to the inlet that goes through the sediment and the carbon filters first before it goes into the membrane there. So I want to trim this off just a little bit. And then these are just like a little push lock uh, John Guest connection. So there's that and that will be connected up. So now I've got the feed line coming into the RO filter. And then there is a couple of other lines. There's a black line and that is for the waste drain. And then there is a blue line and that is for actually going to your tank or your reservoir or whatever you're going to hook up the RO system to. Now the Stealth 150 comes with another device as well and it is this is like a, a bypass valve and it is used to basically send some water down the drain prior to going to the system and it comes with a purple and a red hose and for the red hose, it says if your system, if your water is over 300 parts per million of whatever it might be, whatever the, the content is, they say to use the red hose. If it's under 300, you can use that. And basically, this is a one-to-one -one outlet hose, and this is a two-to-one outlet hose. So 
based on the specifications of the system with this red one in here, it should give me two, two gallons of waste for every one gallon of water that I get. So I'll go ahead and install that one. And then this actually goes into the system in between the outlet of the filters and the membrane. So we'll get that installed. All right, it might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but how this installs is there's a black and a blue line that come out of the membrane. And this bypass system actually installs on the black side. And then your black waste hose is gonna plug into the other end of that and then go into your drain, or in my case, it'll be the sump pump. And then the blue line will actually connect to the blue side and come down and go into my reservoir so that it can fill up. It has a shut off on it. I've got a shut off actually up here for the system as well. So I am going to go ahead and get the black line installed in the other end of the bypass here and get it routed down into one of my sump pumps. All right, before I get too far along, I wanted to kind of show you what I'm gonna be using for the float inside the tank. So this is a like a half inch thread with a washer and a nut on it. Then on the other side, there's a compression nut for the inlet hose that goes to it. So I actually drilled a half inch hole in the reservoir here, and I'll show you real quick. Hopefully you can see that on camera there, there's a hole in the reservoir. And then this will just actually go right through there on the outside, put the nut on it. Tighten it up so that it's a good seal on the inside. And then we've got a float inside. And I think it'll probably take it somewhere in this neighborhood of here, which is fine. I, you know, I don't need, I won't need all the amount of water that's going to be in this, but I thought it'd be nice to have a bigger reservoir than what I needed in case I wanted to do like multiple, like back to back brew days or whatever. And then I'll be drilling a hole in the top of here for the outlet that goes to the pump so it can suck up the water and transfer it over. And then I also need to drill some kind of a vent hole in here too. And I'm gonna put some kind of a PVC elbow system so that critters and stuff can't get in there and contaminate the water. But we'll get to that here shortly. Sorry for all of the freaking noise. My softener system decided it wanted to get in on the party today. So it's now it's purging and doing the back flush and all that stuff. And it can go on for an hour or more so. I do not want to stop filming while that's going on, but one of the reasons it took me so long to get this whole thing together is I've been try I was trying to find a pump that really stood out to me as being good enough to push the water over to the brewery. And I kept looking and looking for pumps and I would find them, but the thing about these diaphragm pumps is that most of them are 12 volts. And you know, I didn't want to hook up a transformer and all that stuff, but then the 120 volt ones that I found would be like really low gallons per hour. So finally I found this C-Flow pump that I have on the wall back here. And one of the things that people complained about with it is that the threads on the pump itself are not NPT. I'm not sure what type of thread they are. They might be like a British straight pipe or something like that. But in the literature for the pump, it says that the, hey, looky there. <laughs> Imagine that. It says that the fittings that actually, and it's it's got a, um, a compression type fitting that goes on the pump. And then it says that the other side, which you can probably see, is for PEX. So what I decided I would do is I would go ahead and get some PEX and use it for the connections for the pump, both into the tank itself, as well as connecting to the CPVC on the other side. What I did was I took the PEX, attached it to the other connector that looked like the one I just showed you, and then I've got it down, going down into the tank. I drilled a, like a 5 8 hole in the tank, and then I've also got the vent that I was talking about earlier. I just put together some half inch CPVC and basically made like a little elbow that points down, and that's the vent because whenever this thing kicks on, it's going to pull some suction in the tank itself. Incidentally, I did turn on the system, the RO system. I got everything hooked up. The inlet hose is there. I wound up swapping out the black hose for some clear like refrigerator line that I had that was the same size. 
because I actually wanted to get over to uh, the other. I've got two sump pumps, as you might be able to see. There's one there and then there's one there. And I wanted to be able to go into this sump pump. It doesn't run very often, and so I didn't want to put more stress on this. This is the one that the water softener drains into and everything, and it seems to run all the time. So I wanted to kind of split the stress up between those two. And then I'm going to run the other bit of PEX up and over. Sorry about the light there. And I've got my connection that runs to the brewery right there. The reason it's so short is whenever I was doing all the plumbing for the refrigerator, I wound up needing some more half inch pipe or half inch CPVC in order to get all that stuff to work. So that being the case, I actually cut it off really close to the wall, but I've got stuff to splice in it and everything. And then I'm gonna use like a, one of these shark bite type connectors for this to be able to run it up and over. And I did find that I had an extension cord and I have an extra plug up here. You can't see it on the camera, but I have an extra plug up there that connects to the other sump pump and I got a small extension cord. So I'm just gonna do that for temporary to run the pump to. Just need to get the PEX pipe hooked up. And I did not buy one of those expensive crimping tools. Cause I mean, it's like 38 or $40 for one of those crimping tools. I'm actually just using a pair of pliers with like a it's like a stainless band clamp that they have. And I know, probably trigger all the plumbers. Oh, it'll never work, it's gonna leak. But uh, so far, I got that one hooked up and it's got, you know, there's no, I pulled a vacuum on it and there's no leak there. So um, I'm gonna try it and see what happens. Hopefully it won't leak. If, if it does leak, then I might have to go to something else. But let me get this all hooked up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I've got everything completely done up. Let me show you what I've got here. Uh, got the joint made there came back over here got the shark bite type apparatus in running the blue hose or the pex all the way down to the pump got the pump in there everything is all hooked up moment of truth here we go and this pump does have a pressure switch on it so it will hopefully shut off once it reaches pressure the I believe the valve yeah the valve is off at the brewery over there so we shouldn't have any issue with that there should be enough water in the sump at, at this point to be able to probably build some pressure but let's see what happens oh it's a little noisy hey how about that no leaks no nothing anywhere it shut off by itself success now the question is does the sink work so let me run out there i'll take you with me all right moment of truth i'm not gonna let this thing run very long because of the fact that i know there's not much water over there but let's see what happens we have water ladies and gentlemen we have water i'm gonna shut it off hey and the pump shut right off so awesome so turn it on look at that that thing has got a heck of a flow to it i'll tell you what it's uh it's working really well so that that is what i wanted that is what i was hoping for all right so we got it done it is plumbed in the pump is working the sump is filling up right now one of the things when i posted some information about this on i think it was instagram one of those somebody had said that because all the chloramines and everything were out of the water through the RO system that they had a horrible smell coming out of the water. I will report back definitely on that. I'm hoping that the reservoir will fill up overnight. I think it will, because um, it seems to be filling up pretty quick from what I can tell. A couple of things really quick and update. The reservoir did fill up overnight. The one thing I did determine, I had the float installed upside down and so I had to flip it over, which meant the float was sticking up higher. Uh, it filled up overnight and it actually filled up all the way to the top of the reservoir. And I had a tiny leak out of the side where the float attaches. So I wound up bending the float like 180 degrees so that it's down farther. And it's actually down below the entrance now. So I won't have to worry about any kind of a leak or anything like that. The other thing that I will tell you is that uh, the pump, it kind of bumps every once in a while. And I don't know if it's some pressure leaking back or what the deal is. But I decided I'm going to go ahead and unplug it if I'm not using the system. So... I may actually install a plug with a switch attached to it so I can flip the system on and off. It's not like I'm using it all the time and I know when I'm going to use it, so it's not a huge ordeal. But just wanted to kind of let you know about those two things. The water heater pan 
definitely did save my butt because it was leaking out of there and all that was running into the sump pump so that was a great idea that i did that and i definitely advise you to go ahead and do that i'm really happy so far oh i forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that hydrologic did send me the stealth ro 150 it was not a new unit it was like a refurbished or demo unit and i also had to purchase a 180 dollar water analysis kit from them so Technically, it really wasn't free, but if you have any questions about anything, I'll leave all the stuff that I used in the description down below. But, you know, really appreciate you coming along for the ride. It's it's so nice to actually have that sink working now, and I'm, I'm, I'm super ecstatic, as if you couldn't tell. And uh, this has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on that next video. Don't forget the bell.